So hello, Jens Ingo. Hello, Lucas. So uh, I'm glad to have you uh, for this interview because uh, I think you're doing a really important uh, thing for the community. Um, and we're going to talk about that uh, today. Um, but first, for those who uh, might not be familiar with you and your project, can you please uh, introduce uh, yourself a little bit? Just a short introduction, I mean. Yes, yes. My name is uh, Jensingo Brodeso. And um, yeah, I studied uh, visual arts in Brussels. That's how I arrived in Belgium, where I live right now for the last mm, around 30 years. And um, yeah, and I'm a tango DJ, like like you. <laughs> yes, uh, but you're also um, uh, developing a very important uh, project uh, that you're quite well known for so far. But for those who are not familiar with uh, Tango Time Travel, as it's called, can you please give us a short summary of what uh, what this project is about? Yeah, Tango Time Travel is a project which consists in uh, digitizing and uh, rendering uh, available um, recordings from uh, the golden age of tango, uh, mainly shellac recordings, original shellac, from original shellac recordings, but also from uh, from early vinyl records, because, you know, starting with the 1950s, uh, vinyl records took over and um, uh, so the, the original recordings were done uh, starting with that uh, time on vinyl. And Tango Time Travel is dedicated to uh, reissue uh, these recordings uh, in, a, in a new way, in a high resolution, as digital downloads. Yeah, so essentially, uh, put more simply, so you're, uh, you're trying, you try to make the um, uh, recordings um, available like in a higher quality and in an accessible uh, way. Um, and... Uh, also because well we will see like there's some reasons for for example um why there's not much development in the cd market uh, for tango and uh yes so we'll see in this interview why uh, your work is so important um but um yeah first of all let's talk a little bit about you and and, and tango because I, I always think it's nice to know a little background of people so even though this interview is mostly about a project this project is still like uh, a child of, of you and your tango uh, life uh, in the end. So I would <laughs> like to know a little bit uh, about this uh, personal history in tango. I, I started dancing in uh, 1999, uh, which is around 23, 24 years uh, now, um, 24 years ago. And uh, yeah, and uh, then um, I started a little later, like um, around 2009, to collect uh, tango music and to get more interested into the tango music, you know, because uh, when you make, when you follow tango lessons, you get an idea and you hear the music, but you you don't know what the music is about and uh, uh, how how to to get deeper into the music. And so uh, when I made the first travel to Buenos Aires in 2009, I uh, came back with a lot of CDs and material, and that was the starting point, you know. So from the CDs, um, I got the impression that there's uh, much more possible, you know, so that there must have been an original uh, support and uh, uh, that this music wasn't recorded directly on CD, but uh, on another medium, uh, especially uh, records. And, and then I started also to collect uh, records um, shortly after. And uh, this uh, gave also birth to my uh, uh, DJ, Tango DJ career to, to, to share my findings uh, to a larger audience. And I also, like, like um, in, in, in the year 2011, uh, 12, I started a blog, a Tango blog. Uh, it's called uh, tango-dj.be where I shared um, a lot of findings and uh, curiosities uh, which I found important during my uh, development into, into, the, into the tango culture. And uh, starting, uh, the, the way how I started is, is, is quite interesting because, you know, I was uh, uh, at that time in 2009, uh, in, in 1999, 
I was uh, in a squat in Brussels and we had a large living room with a wooden floor. And all of a sudden some friends uh, dropped in and they had a ghetto blaster and they started to play this music, you know, <laughs> the tango music, which I wasn't aware of at all. You know, I might maybe in my childhood, I heard some, some, uh, Piazzola, or, or maybe I had the chance to to listen to some Pugliese, you know, uh, from afar. But uh, I was really um, impressed because I, I I couldn't really categorize this music in my in my mind in my cultural background, you know. But what I what I found very impressive was, was that these people started to dance and to dance in uh, in an embrace. I don't remember if it was a close embrace or an open embrace. But they they dance together, uh, and uh, this was something I, I always wanted to do. It uh, recalled me of my uh, childhood, you know, the fairy tales you hear where the people go to the ball and they don't dance together. So I, I was thinking, this is for me. I want I want to do this, you know, and uh, and then I, I I started to to get into into lessons and. Uh, uh, at, at that time, it was quite interesting because the, the evenings or the milongas weren't articulated um, exclusively exclusively by a DJ, but there was always like an orchestra or some live music. Uh, quite amazing, much more than nowadays. Yes. So um, um, I think I think it was interesting how you said that uh, when you listen to the CDs. So this is later than what you're now talking about. So that's in 2009 when you're visiting Buenos yeah, Aires. Around 10 years later, I would say. Huh? Yes. Uh, it's interesting that you said that um, uh, you you could hear that like something was off or that something may have been, um, that there may have been room for improvement somewhere. But that, yeah. that's not, not exactly something most people would probably think about um when they listen to tango music uh so it seems like you're quite technical maybe as a, as a background is that is that is that right no but i i am i'm quite a audiophile you know i i like to listen to music to understand the music and the recordings um but it's more from from let's say um a point of view of of emotion you know not so much from a technical point of view uh, okay my my first approach, you know, towards music is always from a, from an uh, aesthetical and also emotional point of view, and uh, I was thinking uh, on some recordings that uh, yeah uh, put aside um, the fact that you had some some videos around that time already with some um, famous maestros dancing on on some uh, let's say um, tracks with 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 problems, you know. Uh, uh, you you could really hear these 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 problems you know uh, and and they they are really they were really blatant like like a lot of eco i i recall you know a lot of videos with uh, tanturi uh, waltzes you know in demos on on videos and uh, you could hear an, a really strong eco you know and i was wondering how 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 is it possible in that age you know if this music is coming from the golden age that there is an eco you know like this like like from the 70s you know um uh, for for me, this this music uh, uh, should have sounded more like like chamber music, like like a more intimate, you know, like a, a, a tango um, orchestra uh, in a recording room, uh, which has a a certain sound um, signature. And on these recordings, which I heard, the, the orchestras all of a sudden sounded really large, really uh, monumental. And uh, later, I found out that these these uh, artifacts were, were added to, to 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 the original recordings, and they had nothing to do with the original recordings. And then all of a sudden, I saw my CDs in another light. I was thinking, okay, uh, that, why is there like on every second song an echo, and on, on the others there is known, you know? And uh, also, I was was thinking um, when I listened to you know we are we are as humans we are we are quite sensitive to to pitches in voices in human voices because that's that's something from the stone age or from from the beginnings of our evolution we can really uh localize and 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 identify individuals by by the pitch of their voice and and the timbre you know so um when i was listening for instance to to uh, edgardo donato uh, isu muchachos 
on some CDs, which which were recorded on the label RCR Victor, I was thinking, how is it possible that one time he sounds like a man and sometimes he sounds like a woman on, on some tracks, you know? And then all of a sudden I was thinking, ah, I can maybe like try to 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 bring down a little bit the speed to 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 get more uh, to the natural sounding voice, you know. And I, I wrote an article on my in my blog. I don't re really remember when it was like like ten years ago or something uh, about this circumstance that that there were a lot of uh, to my mind at that moment, you know, a lot of Donato recordings which were uh, uh, transferred too too uh, too fast, you know. And there is actually a relationship, and that's that's actually quite technical as, as a um, finding. There is a relationship between um, uh, transfer speed or playback speed. And pitch uh, when you uh, uh, play back um, an uh, uh, analog recording faster, the pitch goes up. If you play play it back slower, the pitch goes down. And this means when 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 the tangos um, came out of the shellac era, you know, uh, with the original records, you know, um, uh, pressed on 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 black shellac, they um, they had to be transferred. And and there, th this concept of transfer is is something which which I became more and more aware of. You need a transfer to be able to play tango as a tango DJ in a milonga. This is also true for DJs which are playing with vinyl records because a vinyl record is when you when we are talking about the golden age, which spans if if we take the larger golden age from 1935 to let's say 1955. Most of these recordings uh, are um, were, were, were issued on on shellac, you know. So already a, a vinyl DJ has um, second generation or third generation uh, media with his vinyl records because they were transfers from shellac records. At that time, you know, like in the, in the 50s, beginning of the 50s, late 50s, beginning of the 60s, there was a transition from the 78 RPM shellac record to uh, the less noisy uh, vinyl record, and which was also unbreakable. And you could you could uh, store much more information on one uh, record, you know, than, than before. Before on the shellac record, you had one side, one song. On, on, on a on a bigger vinyl record. First, there were 10-inch vinyl records and later 12-inch vinyl records. These are the records we know nowadays, you know, the, the long play records. On these records, you can store uh, between six and seven songs per side, which makes like 12 songs or 14 songs, depending how much you want to compress them on, 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 on the medium. And uh, this, this I think this was, was uh, especially interesting for uh, fans of of uh, or connoisseurs of um, classical music because before classical music you had to change uh, quite often your sights you know to listen through uh, an opera on shellac and with uh, with a vinyl record uh, these uh, intervals became shorter uh, longer so you had a more enjoyable time uh, listening to to your records. Also, the, the signal-to-noise ratio is a little better on the vinyl records. All this to say, then again, like in the, in the 80s, when the CD came up, uh, vinyl records became like a, um, a lost medium, you know? And um, then again, a new medium came up, the CD, and everything had to be transferred on CD. And during all these transfers, you know, from, from the shellac to the vinyl, from the vinyl to another vinyl, maybe to another vinyl, and then to uh, to CD, and from CD maybe to the digital space, you know. All this, there were changes, you know, um, things added, artifacts added, or maybe the um, recording was a little bit altered, you know, played back in a different speed, not in the original speed. So in the end, all these errors added up to a new... Um, recording in a way you know uh, the message was changed you know the intention of the orchestra and this is uh, is quite um, important because we, we think okay yeah, it's a little bit faster it's a little more dynamic it's good no it's not because you know in in a musical piece you have uh, what is called keys and these keys uh, give you emotions when you listen to to the music you know they can be 
in minor, they can be in major, and uh, according to um, the the um, the key, the the emotion is different. It can be a, a very happy emotion if if it's in 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 major, and it can be very sad when it's in minor. And when you speed up the records, all these parts change places. You know, so you might have places which were intended to be sad, uh, becoming uh, uh, happy, and uh, places or sections which were uh, meant to be um, uh, sad become happy, you know, and and, and vice versa. Uh, this is not the intention. This was it's not the intention of the orchestra. It's something else, you know. And uh, still nowadays, when I go to Milonga, I, I I still hear people or DJs playing these fast uh, transfers, uh, which uh, render men's voices into women's voices, and uh, uh, which are quite stressful actually because they become in in certain cases really really fast, you know. And the idea of tango time travel is to uh, go back to the original recording and to make a critical transfer, uh, taking taking into account the um, intention of the orchestra. And in, with intention, I mean uh, reproducing or approaching the recording speed uh, as much as possible, without um, without you know without um guessing an intention hmm. you know this is also another another thing I, I i i come across quite often right now you have some guys since uh since we published uh since there was my article on, on, my, on my blog and later the article of uh Ach ackermann lost in keys uh, which is which is much more technical and uh, into into the music theory, you know, and explaining very well uh, what, what what happened and what what can be done to to correct uh, these 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 errors. And um, but when you when you when you listen to um, to some people, they 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 think now they 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 knew this forever you know <laughs> and it's a quite new finding uh, and uh, and then they they appear to be like uh, uh, 2.0 mozarts and and they, they try to to um, guess intentions uh, of an orchestra and they retune uh, things this is a little bit invasive you know so we at tango time travel we try to to stick to the facts and the fact is the original record and if you have an original record, you can already compare the A side and the B side. And uh, if you if you um, find a deviation on the A side, you can still compare it with the B side. Most of the time, you know, uh, the A and B sides were the uh, recorded on the same day, nearly um, like uh, if also in the in the in the same region of the day, maybe in the morning. You know, they they recorded uh, um, side one and uh, B side one and two or a and b and uh, maybe also the other recordings because when you look at a certain repertoire you have more records you know you have like uh, the record before and the record which was issued afterwards and sometimes they are all issued or they were all recorded on the same day the, the issue date is another problem it doesn't really matter so you have already a, a, a quite good uh, comparison because you can you can follow the repertoire and you can see if there is a uh, an effect, you know, towards already towards a certain um, uh, concert pitch, you know, because this is another uh, problem, you know, uh, there is like a transition time uh, in the 19, end of the 1930s, where the orchestras which were tuned before to 435 hertz, retuned to 440 hertz. But not all at the same time, and this depended also a little bit on the record label. So we we saw with Tongo Time Travel quite a lot of um, interesting um, 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 historical facts about which orchestra retuned when and um, which orchestra was like quite an early adopter, like Osvaldo Fresedo. Osvaldo Fresedo already retuned in 1934 because he was on a travel uh, to uh, New York. In, in the end of, or during 1933. And there he was called to perform with, an, with a local orchestra, um, a classical or chamber orchestra. 
And uh, that's also the reason why you find in the recordings of uh, Fresedo, a uh, harp and um, a vibraphone. That's uh, maybe also related to, to, to partly to this experience. And uh, the vibraphone, I think, was a quite new instrument at that time, and it was already uh, delivered by default in 440 hertz hmm. as uh, the concert pitch, you know. So I think it could be related that uh, they, uh, the whole course orchestra uh, retuned around this uh, instrument. And uh, the 440 concert pitch was already adopted in, uh, in the United States. So I, this is, a, for instance, an orchestra which, which was an early adopter. I was, I was really came late, you know, like uh, all the orchestras who record, which recorded with um, Odeon, Disco Nacional, they retuned like in 1944, like nearly at the end of the golden age. And if you if you look at uh, uh, the Uruguayan uh, record label, which which came into life quite late, and which is very sad for the Uruguayan tango music because it was only recorded uh, starting with the 19 with 1944 around this, you know. And they uh, we found they 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 really retuned extremely late, you know, because maybe of this island situation and they had a uh, a monopoly monopoly in a good sense because you know when i when when i look at the the orchestras and the musicians you had more competition to my mind in in buenos aires um among the recording orchestras with less exchange you know there are some exceptions like for instance typica victor which recu recruited their their musicians uh from other orchestras but it was a, a studio only orchestra but in, in, in Montevideo, uh, the musicians around which were recording at Sondo, they had quite a intensive exchange and you co could listen to a little bit like typical Victor in Buenos Aires. You had or uh, uh, musicians from one orchestra performing in the recording of another orchestra. And uh, so it was, uh, to my mind, uh, a much less competitive uh, environment. Yes, I have to... Uh interrupt you for a moment here uh, i forgot to grab a, a pen uh, in advance uh, that's quite uh, handy with the questions I have here. So um, I think we already went uh, into a lot of uh, uh, topics here. Um, but just I want to see if we can make something more concrete, because you, you were talking about uh, songs that are, um, for example, that went to too many, uh, too many transfers um, from uh, shellac to uh, vinyl and to CD and even to digital, maybe after that. Um, and you also say that you can hear it in milongas uh, that they that they use these um, tracks that are incorrectly uh, tuned. But there, there's a lot of talk about tuning on on Facebook, or at least uh, when I was more active, like uh, six years ago or something. There was a lot of talk about this uh, tuning. What's the right pitch? And but can you give us some concrete examples of songs that simply do not sound well? the way they are usually played do you i mean i, I might uh, surprise you a little bit too much with this question um because it's very like i'm asking for something quite concrete I, i'm, yeah, I'm we, can, we can talk about mandria uh, recorded by uh, honda Rienzo with this singer um, alberto Echagüe. this is for instance a very classical song which is uh, like <laughs> too fast or oh, let, let's take the waltzes of of um Edgardo Donato. Most of the time, uh, these these really, uh, you know, a, a normal human being can uh, hear um, like a, a difference uh, in pitch, like uh, starting with one percent. You know, you can you can you can uh, uh, distinguish pitch differences starting with one percent. If you if you get into the meta, you you can uh, even uh, distinguish uh, smaller pitch differences. Um, but one uh, percent is quite normal for everybody. So everybody should be able to, to hear this. When you use a pitch control in your DJ program or on a record player, you can slow down or speed up an analog record or on your computer, a digital recording, you know? 
uh, unless you don't fix the key, you know, this is a thing we can do today, but in the 60s, 70s, 80s, they couldn't do this. Uh, so uh, for for Chagua, Mandria, and um, also for some waltzes of, of, um, of Edgardo Donato, um, the speed um, uh, gain during the transfer uh, um, history and the generations of, of transfers can on certain transfers be quite high, like up to five to 10%, you know, hmm. and it's something which is like uh, hearable for, 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 for anybody. And uh, especially dancing to, to this uh, very speedy uh, sped up and uh, hysterical uh, uh, Donato waltzes, I don't appreciate as a dancer. And also Mandria, you know, you you think you're like a like a battery rabbit or something, you know, from jumping around and doing always the same uh, movements. It's it's restless, you know. It's it brings your it brings your emotions down. But I think some some people like to 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 dance like this. I, I guess you know, if not, they wouldn't be played. But they are played less and less, and 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 most of of the DJs become uh, conscious and aware of of, of this circumstance. But when people uh, would go, I'm not sure if you have, for example, these Donato waltzes. But even if people would go to your store, uh, they would be able to buy uh, transfers that are as intended. Uh, in your opinion, in your way of working with it, they are as intended, and they will be slowed down. In this case, for example, no, they wouldn't be slowed down because we don't uh, depart from the sped up um, master or or record or we go to the original record and when we listen to it and when we play it like at the recommended speed there was no recommended speed in the shellac era you know but when we play it at 78 rpm we have like uh, de deviations of under one percent you know which are like for most of the people irrelevant what we are talking about now are later transfers which are sped up uh to the extreme and this is something which is uh significant what what we do is uh it's very light you know most but but what i meant is like instead of selling these transfers later transfers that sound wrong because they're too fast yes. you yes. actually you you actually do sell something that should sound more like it was intended that, that's what yes. i meant exactly exactly and we, we don't that's also the reason why we don't uh, uh have in the in the in our store the the um um uh, later vinyl transfers you know because uh um i, I cut the, the facebook so uh because the later uh, vinyl transfers um, often have this problem you know they have other problems you know there is a lot of problems and uh and these these tracks are all played in the in the milonga and now uh, the more i work with uh, tango time travel I'm, I'm not alone there's a lot of uh, people around it you know but the more i work uh, with this project the more i'm aware of 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 other problems, you know, which are quite um, awkward. For instance, let's take the Puro Guapo, um, recorded by Pedro Laurens um, in the in the thirties, I think. Eh? Um, or let's take uh, uh, No Me Extraña. In 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 then you have when you have certain um, transfers from vinyls, and later I think the the CD producers they just took maybe some. Um, tapes from which which were made for 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 vinyl transfers and when they made the CDs, they they didn't necessarily go back to the to the original record to to make uh, their CD collections. So uh, on some vinyls uh, and dating from the sixties seventies, um, there are like tape edits. You know, there is like some seconds missing. You know, uh, discontinuities. You know. The orchestra is playing, blah, 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 blah. it's like a jump, you know, and uh, and this is to my ear when I hit, listen to this, it's like a typical tape splice, you know, you cut, you cut the tape and you uh, uh, glue it again, you know, maybe there was a, a thump or like a, a distortion uh, and and they they removed it and then they they they. Uh, um, edited the, the tape together, they glued it together, you know. 
uh, but shorter. So when you do it in an analog manner, you will lose uh, time, you know, because a musical piece has a timeline. And when you when you cut the timeline and you shorten it, it's shorter. And it, it, it there's a discontinuity. And on, on these two tracks, uh, No Me Extraña, the Puro Guapo, uh, I think No Me Extraña, there might be like two or three uh, tape uh, um, edits and on, on the Puro Guapo, at least one in the beginning. Uh, and people still play it, you know. Now we have a we have a very nice uh, uh, um, album with all recordings of uh, the Pedro Lawrence Orchestra. Um, and there these versions sound pristine. Or let's take uh, as another example um, uh, the um, Alver La Passa. It starts with a vibration like this. Like, it's like somebody put the put a, um, a finger on, on the cartridge, you know, yeah. because the, I mean, it would have jumped otherwise because there was a damaged record or something. It sounds like this, you know. And, and, but on the Shellac record, this is not present, you know. Neither are the tape, tape, tape edits on the Shellac records because, you know, the master record, the concept of the master record in the Shellac era was not a tape. It's a, a metal record. It's the the process that the the orchestras um, recorded in the in the golden age is also called or known as the direct to disc recording technique, and the orchestra met at a certain moment. Everybody had to be present. There was no like uh, multi track uh, recorders. There was only like in the beginning one microphone. Later three, four hmm, with the development of the mixing tables, and. Um, but what's what what came out of the mixing table was always a mono signal, and with this mono signal was uh, made uh, a wax platter. You know, they graved the the musical information into a wax record, and this wax record was then uh, through galvanic processes uh, turned into a negative, positive, and uh, one of the positives uh, is called the. Uh, uh, the master record, you know, and it's a metal disc which was uh, archived and later, you know, because the record labels are no museums, when the musical taste changed in the 60s, 50s, 60s, um, they uh, removed this, these metal um, masters because it took a lot of space. Already we have like um, space problems with, with our <laughs> Shellac collection, you know, because it's it's a lot of uh, space you need when you have one track per side on, on each record. And they're heavy. And the metal records might have been even heavier. And so they, I think they, they got the scrap value most of the time, you know. But uh, this is not, uh, not so important because when you have a good, uh, well-preserved uh, Shellac record, you can still make a very, very good uh, transfer. And personally, I don't know how a metal record sounds, you know, or plays, you know, but what's the sound of it, you know? That's another problem, you know? I think they were mainly meant to be able to press new shellac records, you know? When they wanted to make a new series from, from the shellac, they took the master and then they, they put it again into this positive-negative process, but it was not meant to be played, you know? So there was a lot of... Uh, uh, um, scandalizing, you know, around this circumstance with a certain uh, director of a la record label scrapped all the masters of the golden age or something, you know. But I, I, I think it's less uh, less horrible as we we were thinking when I'm thinking about it today. Yes, um, I, I, I'm just thinking all uh, the time. Let me, let me, yeah? Maybe, yeah, yes. Let me maybe um, mention some other problems, you know. Um, so these are artifacts, you know, there's uh, uh, speed, you know, uh, pitch problems, which which result in pitch problems. So we don't get the, the, the keys in the right place. Then there's uh, the edit problems, you know, there we have uh, edited the piece and uh, uh, cut out uh, little uh, micro sequences. And uh, then there is um, maybe also the problem of uh, distortion, you know, uh, and uh, the overall sound quality, you know, sometimes I have the impression they used quite bad um, needles for the transfer, cartridges, and material. And then... Uh, Sorry, direct... what, 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 what step of the process? Yeah, when they made the transfer. 
Ah, okay, that's, okay. You have, yes. to play, you have to play the, the something, you know, at least, you know, whether it's a, a tape from from an earlier transfer or a shellac record at a certain stage. There was certainly a shellac record involved, you know. And uh, then there is this uh, problem of eco, you know, um, reverb reverberation added, you know. And this is quite um, interesting because it, it it leads us to an, to an, to another subject, which is noise, you know. Yes. Yes. Noise. When we talk about analog music, we also talk about noise. Personally, um, I, I I don't do not uh, I'm not part of 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 the people who who say I only like digital music or only like analog music. I think both media have have a, a right of ex they co exist coexist right now, you know. And you have also this resurgence re um, resurrection of of vinyl uh, records, you know. Yes. Everybody wants to 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 have a record player now and to play right vinyl records. Okay, um, but there is something to it which is uh, interesting. You know, you you get maybe uh, closer to to your um, artists, preferred artists, musicians, um, because you don't have this later uh, mastering which which puts a filter between you and 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 your your beloved tracks you know um so I, I was talking about the noise you know the noise um and i think the i think that the the echo they added was also meant to reduce a little bit the noise carpet because uh, in a way when you listen to a tango which has a lot of added uh, echo the the noise carpet goes down uh, it's it's barely hearable anymore. But also the detail of the music becomes a little bit more more uh, uh, hidden or disappears. Um, so th this 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 is um, uh, the negative side of the the echo, and the echo also changes the whole uh, stage and um, sound. Uh, uh, appreciation of of the original situation the orchestra being in the studio recording the track you know i think there were some some sound engineers in the past which were quite interventionist and maybe also they they i, I wrote some articles on this in my in my blog too maybe they tried to to bring the music closer to the taste of the time and in the 60s 70s the eco was quite popular like in the music of david bowie and, and other stuff you know and so they were thinking oh like let's uh, have the tango sound like today and and that's something we, we can also with tango time travel try to avoid you know try yes to, yes to have it yeah. to, like, like today you know there's some things you can do though, uh, but you should always uh, respect the original recording and uh, and when when you are finished, make some A B comparison to be sure to 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 not overdo it, you know. Yes. Um, so that's. Um, I also wrote down when we talked about this earlier. Um, um, well, in a sense, like, can you avoid the noise? Um, the noise is the noise is actually quite an interesting chapter, you know, uh, because um, a lot of DJs and also people in the in the in the crowd, you know, the people who dance tango, who go to the milonga, to the marathon, to the encuentro, or the festival, they um, sometimes are trained to listen to music to digital music and digital music doesn't have noise when when the when the cd came up in the 80s i was i was listening to, to a lot of classical music or other other genres and, and once i had a, a, a cd in the hand i was like oh no noise anymore <laughs> it's like incredible because there is still some noise but it's so low that that you cannot really hear it you know um uh, but i was really amazed about it the, the first digital music cds you know uh, so now our conditioning, you, or when we listen to music, is is uh, uh, influenced by by the digital sound, which doesn't contain uh, noise. And so people like a little bit like uh, the people in the seventies when they added eco, you know, to to bring the music to the modern taste. Nowadays we have some uh, um, tango uh, re. Uh, editions um 
reissues, which are uh, in the same way uh, fitted to the modern taste without any noise. The problem, the problem with this is that you, when you take out too much noise, you take out also the music. It's a little bit like milk you put in the coffee. Once the milk is in the coffee, it's difficult to get out the milk without taking out some coffee too. You know, your milk becomes a little bit brown then. Huh? And uh, that's the same if you start with uh, noise filters and stuff like this. Uh, generally, you you go into the high frequency band, you know, because the noise is mainly in the high frequency, but not all, only. You have like a lot of problems, you know, broadband problems with uh, old recordings. You have also noise in the bass, you have noise in the mids. You have noise everywhere, so it's a very difficult to to get an exact noise profile and to to get rid of it. So this is something you have to you have to 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 take uh, care of, and uh, you have to get a good ratio between the signal and noise. I agree. If the signal is really lower than the noise, you 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 have to find another record. You cannot make a transfer from the, from that exam player. That's that's a general finding that, that we have at at uh, Tango Time Travel. If it if it really happens on a on a on an ongoing project, what we try to do is uh, maybe talk to another collector. So maybe he has the record and he can borrow us. We have a little studio in a mini studio in Montevideo where we can take the records and make a quick transfer, a raw transfer, and then later work on it in in, in here in our our studio. But um, or we, we we try to wait, you know. It's a time of uh, matter of patience because uh, sooner or later you you will find the record again, you know. Um, but it can take time, you know. And and so um, for me, um, as these recordings are from the golden age, there is necessarily some noise, and we need to be more and more um, uh, capable to support it, you know, uh, with our hearing. It's it's also, we have to, to train our ears, you know, and our brain is so well done. If there's some noise uh, and it's regular, it, it is completely um, suppressed. Your, your brain is the best noise uh, um, filter, you know. <laughs> yes, well, that's very interesting. You just shouldn't be afraid of playing some noisy uh, tracks, you know, or nobody will die, it's okay, you know. But but uh, you know I've seen some transfers in the past, not from you, but from other places that just had too much. Like the, the quality was better than what was available on CDs, but then you had too much, uh, like his. Yeah, yeah. this this is uh, maybe the the other or, or clicks and cracks and stuff like this. You know, this is the other thing. You know, there is some things where, where you can work on. You know, clicks, uh, cracks, and. Uh, uh, distortions to a certain degree, you know, you can uh, lower it a little bit, you know, and uh, um, but uh, you should not overdo it, you know, and some underdo it, you know, <laughs> like like you mentioned, you know, and then uh, yeah, it's easy. You just put the thing on the record player, you play it, and uh, that's it, you know, it's your transfer. But uh, that's a little bit too. Uh, too raw, maybe. Huh? Um, also, if, if there is no no analysis of the pitch and stuff like this, then it becomes really um, uh, a really raw work, you know. But um, when we talk about the, the Japanese uh, transfers, there were some which are quite well done. And I have also some examples of, of uh, well done uh, transfers on vinyl. Uh, it's not it's not only that. Um, that um, um, how to say um, the, the new digital transfers or the Japanese are the best. There's also some very good uh, material in Buenos Aires, you know, also on vinyl. It's uh, vinyl re uh, issues, you know. So, no, the modern uh, reissues, I haven't heard, heard uh, them yet, you know. There's some, some new vinyl, vinyl coming up, you know. Because uh, I think they also jump on the bandwagon of the vinyl uh, um, renaissance. Fashion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that does that also mean that, like in the past, 
So I'm not talking about the present, but in the past with these transfers to uh, vinyl, for example, um, that some things were done well because we're mostly talking about things that didn't go well, but there have also been things that went well. Yeah, yeah, indeed, uh, there were a lot of things <laughs> which went well, uh, luckily. But uh, I have a lot of admiration for these uh, sound engineers working with analog technique to restore these records in a, a faithful manner, you know. And some really did a good job, you know. Not all were like bad transfers. That's also the reason why I DJ with um, uh, um, with vinyl records myself. Not exclusively, I also like the digital sound. Uh, I like both. Also, it's a different kind of thinking, you know, when you when you use different media for your DJing, you know. So, uh, but uh, nowadays we are we are we arrive now at a, at a time where um, digital processing, uh, analog to digital converters, digital to analog converters, are like incredibly good you know uh, compared to even five years ago or ten years ago these things are incredible so uh, also the, the 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 tools you 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 have not so it's the best moment to to uh, to digitize your your music you know and it's, it's really a good time for for tango time travel to 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 do its work uh, if you look at um the, the first the beginning of the digital era uh, they were not so well able to to produce good um, uh, transfers you know uh, uh, to bring them in a acceptable manner into the digital domain you know a lot of CDs are like uh, horrible you know and I regret to have ever bought them you know so um, but some are good you know like some of the Japanese are quite okay you know but then again, uh, they 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 do you some DJs told me they they still uh, declick them, uh, they remove some crackle and uh, yeah you can do this. And this is also something which is still possible with uh, tango tango time travel transfers. When you take the high resolution uh, version, you can still work yourself on 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 the on the tracks to to fit them to your likings as a DJ, for instance. Huh? Yes, but I would probably say there's a difference between something you are doing professionally uh, and what most amateur people are doing in terms of uh, remastering and uh, taking, um, making digital transfers themselves. Yeah. So, um, can you maybe talk a little bit about about that? Oh, you mean the YouTube? Uh... Well, there's some people who are who are doing this themselves, but um, do. It, yeah, is that uh, yeah? It seems like a bit bit too good to be true, considering how much effort you put in into this. Um, yeah, we 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 don't know exactly what happened, what's happening in the in the living room um, of the people, you know. But uh, when they publish on YouTube, uh, you are there's some uh, uh, over motivated DJs who publish a lot of uh, uh, transfers they made in the kitchen, you know. So they are like uh, you. You have to wonder what, what are the sources. You know, you don't know where it's coming from. In the best case, it's come. It comes from a shellac. In the worst case, you don't know from some CD. And then again, uh, everything which is on YouTube is like uh, double compressed. You know, you have the compressor of YouTube. I had this problem um, sometimes. You know, you you need quickly a cortina or something and a, a rip something from from YouTube. And I think it sounds really strange when I have the the. 45 RPM uh, vinyl, you know, the single, it sounds like lively with events, you know, eventful music. And and the, the YouTube version was like without any events, you know, and like a brick wall uh, equalization. And and so um, I stopped this, you know, because the, the, the quality is like, like uh, ridiculous. For for the for some transfers, yeah, and some some people like uh, they do maybe a good work with this, but uh, yeah, it, it depends, you know. But you can you can say that the the investment is really high if you want uh, want to be able. You, you could say okay, the wine the uh, shellac rocket is such an old medium, uh, never mind, everything will do, you know. No, you need a really high quality uh, cartridge. Ah, okay, yeah. And uh, pre-amplifiers, which are like uh, 
uh, able to 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 reproduce a, a really detailed signal um and and then you need a converter which is uh, not um sounding bad and uh, yeah there's a lot of things in, in 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 the chain you know you need to clean the records you need the record cleaner um and and then uh, you need the, the the right method for for working on, on yeah the... i can i can understand why you're talking about people doing it in the kitchen because it's uh, it's pretty much what it what it, uh, it 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 it's probably coming down to maybe in some cases it isn't but okay, it's not it, awesome. yeah yeah but if you know how much work goes into the way you guys do this uh or or maybe other other people for other genres of music that it's it's like it's it's so much work and uh yeah i want to redirect my conversation a little bit to to that part uh, about the, the work you put in because when i talk to you so i have not been like very involved in this uh in in, in music in the in the last uh eight years or so um so i i, I didn't know uh, a lot about this project uh, unfortunately but i learned from you that you're actually not doing this uh for profit but yet you're reinvesting uh, uh your 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 income your, your your the gains from selling the music that you reinvest that into getting uh shellacks and 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 the work so mm -hmm. and and you also told me i think you may correct me if i'm wrong here that it's like a it's it's simply a non-profit organization as well yes yes exactly so every every uh, benefit is um is uh, or profit is reinvested or this is this is a form you know of a non-profit making uh, um association uh, to to if you make profits you have to reinvest them into the project and yeah and one 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 really important part is to to get the sources you know the the source material and these are actually the shellac records and um yeah and sometimes you 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 yeah, you you know we cannot uh, possibly buy them one by one on eBay. Or I don't know what you know. It's not possible. You know, uh, I, uh, you you will not find the, the the things we need. You know, it's the, the one problem, and the other is it's it's too much work, and you never know uh, uh, where they are from and which condition they are. So best the best thing uh, is is to to uh, to buy bigger collections, and um, you know, like everything. Uh, uh, living uh has an end you know you and me we will we will die one one day you know and uh, so now, now there's a lot of people who, who who have a shellac collection who are about to die or coming to the end of their life you know so a lot of uh, things come available you know which were like uh, up to now in the in the in the vault of uh, <laughs> of this collector you know and i'm, I'm yeah and, and and the the spouses widows they they don't like or need this these records anymore you know so in the best case you you can you can buy them and then they 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 get in, into the into this community project uh, tango time travel and in the worst case the the family decides to that this also happened quite often in the last uh, time and uh, to give them to a foundation or to to some some place a museum or something and then the, the records end up in a cellar uh, basement and, and and then they 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 degrade you know it's uh, the people think it's a good thing to do yeah but uh, you know I think the the museum has no <laughs> or the foundation has maybe no time to to deal with them and then they yeah oh, thank you okay thank you. Uh, uh, basement you know and that's... Uh, 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 sorry for interrupting but are you talking about argentina now that is the source uh, yeah, of I think, I think it's the same in argentina or in uh, uruguay uh, but that's just... that's where you get your music from mainly you know but it can also be from europe or from asia you know but mainly from uruguay and from um, from argentina and the process is like really um long you know you you like um it's it's not something you can uh you can do um like in the short run it's like uh, something you need to do for years and years especially the collecting part you know there were some records i was uh, or you we were thinking we, we would never find like uh some records uh which, uh are nowadays quite popular but which might might have been less uh, um, successful when they came out uh, let's let's take an example huh? uh, 
Francisco Canaro, the Roberto Maida, the recording in Viano. You know, you know, it it was a, a record which was a little bit um, lost hmm, to uh, up to a certain time. I remember in the in the early um, in the late 2000, mid 2000s, I heard them for the first time in a, in a marathon in a, in a, in Berlin with some DJs, you know. And I was thinking, wow, a very interesting song. I I, I didn't know I didn't know this, you know. Um, and um, actually, when you when you look at the Shellac record, it must have been um, printed in a very very low number, you know. So it it must not have been a big success at that time, you know. Whereas most of the records of uh, Francisco Canaro were published in five thousand to fifteen thousand exemplars, you know, for the first issue, and then then the later reissues, you know, and some but some were not, and and then they become really rare, and uh, and then you 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 need to find them, even even. Um, the, there was a, a vinyl record in the in the eighties, where they had to ask where the record company had to ask the, some collectors to um, and, uh, to borrow them some some records to be able to do it. Uh, so uh, yeah, but finally you, 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 you find these records, you know, or like Poca Suerte, um, Pedro Laurens. This 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 was completely lost, you know. Nobody was was playing it. Or or um, Flores del Alma, Pedro Lawrence, uh, lost, you know, lost to to the dancing public. You know, <laughs> very beautiful uh, uh, recording, but not available. Or in a very bad quality. You remember this this um, um, I, I think Oscar Himshot, this this little uh, boutique in Buenos Aires uh, called Club de Tango. And you could buy only the CDs, um, like made on a CD burner with a little leaflet. The leaflets were, were quite good because they, 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 they are, they turned out to be a quite complete discography, you know. But the the music on the CD was more like a preview, and that that's what I what I call a kitchen transfer, you know. Uh, you don't know where it's coming from, and sometimes you have more noise than signal or or very very uh, uh, fainted uh, signal. But uh, this uh, collection, yeah, they nearly had everything, but in a very bad quality, you know. So Flores del Alma, uh, Pedro Lawrence, uh, Poca Suerte, Pedro Lawrence, Improvisando, the, the Milonga of Pedro Lawrence, all these records were lost, or all these records damaged uh, uh, transfers, like uh, the Pro Guapo uh, and, and some others. Or let's, let's talk about D'Arienzo from the four, 40s, you know. Um, the uh, there were a lot of uh, transfers or um, available which were unsatisfying with eco with sped up um, bad sound uh, and now you 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 can listen to them all again you know and this is quite good progress I would say. Yeah, that's also that's also a reason why 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 it's worthwhile to 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 support the project because we we uh, we are able to to return the 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 investment in a way, you know. Yes, uh, because uh, that may may be a problem if like um, if people are not buying it, then it's hard for you to um, um, uh, to to stop to 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 to, to keep doing this and. Uh, uh yeah so you had something about uh spotify and apple music about uh, the way they uh just reissue the same stuff uh from uh, uh the past mm. and uh also maybe about uh people who, who pirate files something like that um do you have anything to say uh, about these things yeah i think the the um consultation the beginning consultation uh, where, when we found the tango time travel was a little bit um, inspired by uh, how spotify works because spotify actually what they did at a certain moment was just integrating existing cd catalogs you know uh, when we look at it like 10 years ago maybe five years ago uh, the cd production of tango music completely stopped came to an end you know because most of the people were, and this is maybe also, yeah, you can say in a way, 
the responsibility of all the people who copied um, tango music like uh, in in all directions um it's just at the tip of the finger now to to <laughs> copy your whole tango collection and to become a tango dj you know but in the end uh, it's not a um, it's not a, a, a good um, a good job for 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 tango you know because uh, spotify they don't produce anything they pr don't produce anything new i mean if you want to have people who produce something they there needs to be a, a yeah kind of a market and and uh, spotify is like uh, not only spotify you have also tidal and uh, kobus kobus at least you can buy some files you know tidal they have this crazy mqa thing which is like uh, uh just exploded now you know they they have uh, uh, they will also now use high resolution flag like on uh, Kobos. But um, this being said, um, this is the situation, you know, nowadays, uh, everybody is on the platform and thinks, okay, I have easy access and it's like practical, but in the end, uh, does it really bring up new material no these people don't produce anything it's not like netflix at least netflix they, they make new series and stuff like that but spotify especially in the, in the old uh archive music you know this this is how they call this maybe in their in their taxonomy but um uh the, they, they, they don't care they don't they, they have a, a cd catalog they take it and they publish it that's all you know Yes, but so it, doesn't, it doesn't bring us any further, you know, for all these problems we mentioned before. Yes, if you want to go back to the original emotion, and that's the main main uh, topic here, you know, if you want to to bring back the emotion, uh, then we, we we need to to find other sources in Spotify, YouTube, or and I don't know what, you know. Yeah, so maybe a message. Uh... For people who might be pirating stuff, uh, it's not a good idea because there will be no incentive uh, for companies to um, to actually do something new instead of just uh, re reissuing the old mistakes. Uh, and I also think it's really interesting. That's what I thought of earlier when you were talking about how many things went wrong during all the transfers in the past. It's like it's such it's almost like uh i don't want to use the word but i will still do it's like a mind fuck how how we are used to 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 music sounding a certain way and assuming that is the way it sounded back then when it was recorded that that's just that's just a crazy thought like I, even i i have some trouble sometimes uh adapting to the new reality knowing that uh some music might sound better otherwise but i'm so used to it um that it's uh it, it can be kind of tough um and i'm really ha happy that um someone like jens ingo is, is doing this so changing things in such a comprehensive way is just not being in the kitchen doing something for a hobby like it would usually go but you're actually having this whole organization that tries to um do something big and also actually does it and i think that's something we really need to uh respect how uh, how you guys are um, really pulling something off that is so difficult and still it's it's kind of working and it's also maybe thanks to the people who buy your music so that you can reinvest it so it's also a community thing but uh, yeah I wish I wish uh, for the best for this for this project and I hope it it continues to uh, to uh, blossom um, so yes I think you want to say something. No, no, no. Okay, okay. No, uh, I, uh, maybe I, I wanted to say that I, I like your your YouTube channel, um, and because you you produce the content, you know, and it's it's uh, it's interesting. I, I watch it on YouTube and I like it. You know, I, I'm I'm not completely out of YouTube, but here you, there is there is something you you bring it you bring an idea forward. You know, whereas when when I look at some DJs uh, channel, it's only like I have this recording, this recording, this recording. It's more like a show off. But but what's that's what's the sense of these kinds of channels? You know, it, it, for me, it doesn't make any sense. You know? But yes, uh, um, I do have some topics left actually. Um, so I, it's it's a bit strange that we um come to this at the end of the interview but i we haven't really talked about how the project started 
Like I, I know like your backstory that you knew some things were not all right and that you discovered that from your audio file uh, background that uh, some things, but uh, more practically, how how did this begin? When, what year did this begin? And uh, how, how did the decision come about? We haven't talked about that. It took it took quite some time to uh, to to be able to set up the project because uh, first of all you need you need some source material, so there was first this collecting uh, time and also you need to be yeah playing a record player is an art you know uh, playing a record player also uh, implies that you need to configure the whole chain you know um, and you need to train your your ear and start uh, doing things slowly so it took like uh, a certain time to 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 get into the meta, um, um, but um, when we when we, we when we were ready, we, we you know we, we were checking some some repertoire. We were saying okay, in the group we were saying okay, this is like a complete repertoire, and we are able to do it, you know, and then uh, we just started to do it to do it uh, to do the transfers and uh, to start the um, the edition, the publication. Um, the website and uh, and then we were thinking about a name and you know uh, we have a common friend uh, who who is um, who deceased uh, some some years ago um, uh, his name was um, uh, uh, Kontala is this possible um, do you mean an American uh, man yeah. yes, yes. Krugman yeah Krugman, yeah. Krugman. and uh, once we were discussing in a in a Facebook Messenger, uh, private discussion, you know, and then uh, we were like talking about Sherlock. Like, he asked me some questions because he knew I was collecting, and then and I I told him it's like a time travel when you listen to a record, you know, and then he started the 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 project uh, Tango Time Machine, uh, like it's like a, a Facebook group, I think, huh? and uh, later I was uh, uh, thinking about the name for the for the record label, and then uh, we were talking a little bit together with, with the group, you know, and we were saying, ah, Tango, Tango Time Travel, you know, in, in homage to... to uh, oh, that's uh, funny. I, I never knew that. <laughs> I, I, I'm the admin of that group, uh, so that's funny. I, I knew the backstory of the, of the, like it was his name, but I always wondered whether it actually, actually had uh, anything to do with each other, but it does. So that's funny. Yeah, it, it's like, you know, the record player is a time machine, you know, and it works. And you can really go back into the studio <laughs> yeah. in the 30s, 40s and uh, and listen to your to your favorite orchestras. And that's, that's I think, the very nice uh, comparison. Huh? So what year did you begin uh, selling? Yeah, you know, we had, we were looking also about, about what what already exists, you know, the repertoire which already exists. So we we don't make like in the, at least in the beginning, no um, double uh, publication, you know, um, or redundancy, you know. So we we started. We were thinking nineteen hundred forties, you know, nineteen hundred forty to nineteen hundred forty nine, end of nineteen hundred forty nine. Juan Arienzo. That was the first. Um, uh, album we, we we issued and this took like um really a long time because we started it once then we started it twice and then we did it the third time and then then it was a good time you know and uh, when i look at it today uh yeah it was really a lot of tracks you know like 240 tracks i don't i don't remember the exact but it's around this this uh number you know so I mean, it took ages to to go to go through the whole uh, thing, and also to listen through it. You know, like it took one week uh, in the listening room because we when when we have um, when we make when we make a uh, um, repertoire, we have to listen to it in the in the listening room to 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 be able to say okay, we need we need to change the balance. Uh, there's still a problem there. There's a discontinuity, or there is some noise which shouldn't be in there. So that's that's uh, the, um, the quality process, if you want. Huh? You have to listen to it continuously, and uh, <clears throat> this was uh, actually the starting point with Juan uh, Hanzo. And then we built the website, and uh, and then later we 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 started with the with the second uh, um, repertoire and so on. And meanwhile, we get also more source material, and we can make uh, new new. Um, uh, um, albums and then there's also all the all the material we have 
which already exists, but which at a certain moment we will also uh, publish, you know, like uh, Troilo. Um, I think for Troilo, there cannot be enough transfers, no? <laughs> Everybody should take a, 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 make a try. And, um, yeah, and this is a lot of other stuff. Now, for currently, we are working on um, on um, Orchestra Typica Victor. And there we want to split it in two parts, you know. We will come out now with uh, the first um, recordings uh, from 1925 to uh, 1930, this, which is also around quite a lot of uh, recordings, around 200. And, then, yeah. and there we have to really admit that we don't have everything and that probably we will uh, have to have make a third uh, publication with the things we, which we are missing out. There's some tracks we don't have. Generally, if for everything we did up to, up to now, we had everything, you know, you can really say it's a discography complete, you know. That's also very nice because when you uh, want to, I, I personally, I play them too in the milonga, you know. It's interesting because you, when you take the album, uh, you have um, a same um, uh, background and um, they, they sound quite homogen together, you know, because they are from, from, from the same... Uh, transfer and the same approach where whereas for the for the second part of the typical victor yeah we will wait and do something in between uh, because 400 they, are, they made a, a little bit over 400 uh, recordings which is a, a lot you know but um and it will be the typical victor will be really one of our earliest repertoire in terms of time and they the, the the oldest are now nearly 100 years old and but nevertheless, which this remains a repertoire which is quite important for the milonga. You know, we can say it's not played in Buenos Aires, but this is a lot of bullshit also going on there because you know Buenos Aires suffered also from a generational gap in the DJ. There's no continuity, you know. And at a certain time, they started the whole thing uh, again after the the dictatorship and 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 some some hard times. And the new DJs, they were not connected to the original repertoire, you know, so things changed, tastes they changed. And, you know, and also when we do something here in Europe, all of a sudden it happens also there, you know, there's some cross uh, uh, um, experience yes. going on, you know, like yeah. somebody in the group told, told uh, wrote last time, uh, there is no Fresedo being played in Buenos Aires. To this, to this I would answer, yeah, let's play more Fresedo, then uh, they will also play Fresedo at a certain <laughs> moment in Buenos Aires too, you know. So there's a, like a reciproc, uh, reciproc um, uh, copy or um, inspiring, well, let's call it like this, you know. And uh, when you, because when you look at some uh, CD, there were these uh, um, Natucci uh, CD collections, you know, where he, he structured the whole CD collections in Tandas. With cortinas and everything, um, a collection of CDs which you could play in your local milonga, um, and and it's like um, an endless um, a playlist, you know. <clears throat> and in in this uh, playlist were Typica Victor from the twenties. There were Sexteto Fresedo, something which is quite rare also in Europe now, you know, and uh, Sextetos in general, you know, and uh, I think also Holy de Caro Sexteto. And yeah, no. So it's it, it depends how you look at it, you know. If some people have decided to uh, to play uh, more of a certain repertoire, it doesn't mean that the upper reper repertoire becomes uh, impossible. It's just a question of uh, of how you look at it, you know, and where where you where your own uh, preferences are. Uh, just for the last uh, minutes, um, is there anything you can say uh, about about your goals? For the future, like it's a bit of a broad uh, question, but you talked about what you're currently doing. But is there anything in specific that you really want to accomplish, or maybe you don't want to talk about that? Maybe it's, it's a private no, information. It's, it's I don't know. It's 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 true. We have like so many records, and uh, it's like you are in front of a mountain, <laughs> and you think, oh, this is this takes like a lifetime if uh, I want to go. Yeah, but at least you have the records, <laughs> right? Like you could also like have not have the source material and be like yeah i'm gonna publish one track a year because i have nothing else to uh comfort so i guess no, no, no. Uh, 
you know there is a lot of things to do and uh, i think projects don't um we are we are not missing any any uh, material to to do projects but um yeah it's it's maybe the the sheer um quantity which is um a little bit frustrating you know because you have to go through all this and uh but it's maybe also because we have now made the typical victor which is again like a monumental uh, repertoire uh about uh, 200 tracks or something and uh, um and you think it's not going any it's not advancing fast enough you know but it takes the time it takes you know so we have to be patient and um and do it uh, like in the pace uh, which is possible well i admire your dedication to this uh especially considering that it's a non-profit thing you're doing um but it's it's it sounds quite insane, like everything that goes into um into this project and uh how much work it is. And yes, I'm glad uh, some people are um taking the almost like the responsibility of doing this because it's very important. And uh, I think uh, I learned more about uh, what it actually entails uh, in this interview. And uh, there were a lot of interesting things for the audience and. What I found very interesting in particular was uh, understanding the the history of how the current transfers came to be and everything that's wrong with that. And uh, there's just so many behind the scenes things about technical I issues that 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 are just not like you, you want to like open a history book about Tango and read about this. It's just not in there. I mean, we'll say how Darienzo fired Biagi because he was jealous whatever but it won't talk about all these uh, things and maybe it's not interesting to everyone maybe it's not as accessible as talking about Darienzo and Biagi as people or or what they did with their orchestras or the music they played but it's still important and uh, I hope this uh, interview helped clarify some of that uh, hidden background yeah maybe we, we can also say that, uh, that we also have release notes for every uh, album which we published and for somebody who wants to learn a little bit more, it's uh, structured in chapters. And if you want only some some background, because we we learned a lot um, about the history of of uh, the recordings and the situation, the com communicative situation in which the orchestras were. So um, you can read this, and this is uh, maybe this is for, this is for free on the website. It's uh, published there. You can download it and and check it. Also the discographies. So we want to also con contribute to um, rule out some some um, problems in disco in earlier discographies while we are working. You know, we we try to contribute this too. Yes, so that's also an awesome uh, uh, source people can get uh, from this project. Uh, thanks for uh, the conversation today. Yeah, it was very uh, interesting, and uh, I hope to speak to you soon. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, good luck with your channel. Thank you. I, I appreciate the compliments. <laughs>